this video, I'm going to talk about where you can go after you have upgraded to the DC2 Type R brakes without breaking the bank. And uh, a surprise option near the end of what I will be moving forward with for a big brake kit. Hello everyone. Here we have the 2000 Honda Civic brakes uh, that I've swapped off my car and the DC2 Type R brakes that I currently have on my car. As you can see, the caliper itself is quite a bit smaller than that of the DC2 Type R. Uh, it is so small, in fact, that the Honda engineers did not incorporate a bridge between the brackets, which offers uh, more stiffness in the brake calipers. Uh, the caliper itself also uses a 51 millimeter piston. The caliper uh, houses these pads, which are significantly smaller than that of the DC2 Type R. And the rotor size, which is for a 4x100 hub, is tiny in comparison to that of the DC2 Type R. This brake caliper, or this brake rotor, is a 240 millimeter uh, diameter, and it's been sitting in my backyard for some time, hence why it's so rusty. All right. So the deficiencies of this is that if you were to do any track use, you're going to want bigger brakes. So what do you go to? This right here, this setup right here, is the DC2 Type R uh, from Japan. Um, I went with this setup because the hubs in the Japanese DC2 Type R had a 36 millimeter axle, uh, which is conducive to K swaps, as well as the general size of this caliper is a lot bigger. It incorporates a bridge between the caliper brackets, which offers extra stiffness, as well as a 57 millimeter piston size. Okay, this helps in extra braking force. The pads itself. Uh, is quite a bit larger than that of the Civic and because the DC2 Type R is used uh, for many track events there are significant amounts of compounds you can choose from that are meant for track use. Next is the rotors. The rotor is a 280 mil 82 millimeter rotor but uh, to swap onto this rotor obviously these are 5x114 uh, hubs and you require specifically DC2 Type R or Civic Type R hubs for this trans transition. Uh, the reasons why you would want this setup is for track use. However, I have saturated this setup because uh, in the previous events of Time Attack, I have started micro-cracking the rotors uh, only on a second set of pads. Ready. Here we have the DC2 Type R braking system. We have the caliper, a brand new rotor as well as a used rotor that I've had for some time. Um, once I installed this brake system onto my vehicle, it was a significant upgrade over the um, stock Honda Civic brakes. Uh, obviously from the larger calipers, the larger rotors as well as the larger pad, uh, this was to be expected. I initially installed uh, Carbotech XP10 brake pads, which were used for autocross and light lapping duty. Once I got more serious into track use, I upgraded to the G-Lock R12 pads. These have a higher heat range than that of the XP10. And because of that, it is starting to show some issues on the brake rotors. This brake rotor, if you were to zoom in, shows quite a bit of micro cracking. And after several track events, uh, sometimes when I come off track, the brakes would be smoking. Um, Another problem that I'm having while tracking this setup is that the rear tires are locking up on the vehicle when I go into corners. So because of all these problems, I want to and would like to upgrade to a larger front brake setup to deal with the heat capacity issues of the rotors, as well as the locking up issue and the uh, brake bias issue that I'm currently experiencing. All right, so after you have your DC2 brakes, where do you go after that? You can go for our big break uh, aftermarket companies such as Spoon, Willwood, Brembo, or StopTex, uh, or any of the other ones who make big breaks for the DC2 Type R. However, whenever I looked at them, they are quite expensive, especially when you factor in replacement parts cost, such as two-piece rotors or whatever other bits you may need. Uh, so I have laid out here several OEM big break options from Honda. Um, one issue, however, when you go to a newer generation Honda brake setup is that they reduce the hub flange diameter so that the DC2 Type R uh, 
uh, wheel flange will not fit into any of the newer generation Hondas, as well as that the DC2 Type R uses a 70.1 millimeter hub register, whereas all the newer generation Hondas uses a 64.1 millimeter hub register. So I would recommend uh, going to a RSX Type S um, wheel hub, as that retains the 36 millimeter axle. Uh, however, it has the smaller flange diameter as well as the 64.1 millimeter uh, hub register. Here we have the 9th gen SI uh, brakes. I recommend this setup as it features a 57 millimeter uh, diameter piston, which is the same size as that of the DC2 Type R. I specifically skipped the 8th gen Civic SI brake calipers because they use a 54 millimeter diameter piston. The rotor size here is a 300 millimeter diameter rotor, which is larger than that of the DC2 Type R. Uh, however, if you want it even more heat capacity, you can try that of the TSX. The TSX brake calipers uh, houses a 300 millimeter diameter rotor. However, it is thicker um, at 28 millimeters when compared to this one, uh, which is at 25 millimeters. It, the D TSX also uses a 57 millimeter piston size. So all three of these calipers with the TSX will have a 57 millimeter diameter piston. If you want even bigger, uh, here we have the TL Type S caliper, the Brembo caliper. All right, this is a two piece aluminum design. It is bolted together with four pistons, uh, staggered sizing from uh, 38 millimeters and 42 millimeters. When you calculate the difference between that end of the 57 millimeters is just only about 1% smaller. However, with the larger brake caliper, as you can see when compared, as well as the aluminum um, fixed aluminum caliper design, it is going to offer more rigidity and more immediate feel. Uh, some challenges when you want to transition to this caliper is that the mounting bolts uh, used are four, uh, M14 when compared to most traditional Hondas, which is uh, M12s. So you can either drill your knuckles to uh, accommodate bigger bolts, or you can add inserts in here to accommodate smaller bolts. Uh, most of the time when you are looking at used calipers, make sure that the threads here are fully intact as a seizing of the brake caliper bolts to the caliper is a common problem in the TL Type S Brembos. Next problem you have is that the Brembo uh, calipers uses a fixed hard line connection here as opposed to a banjo bolt. So a special bolt will be necessary to make this connection. And the last problem you're going to have is the physical spacing from the rotor and the caliper. Uh, in order to solve this issue, you can either machine the mounting points of the caliper or you can add a uh, brake rotor spacer between the wheel hub and the rotor to space it out properly for this setup to fit. And lastly, as you can see, the Brembo setup uh, pads are significantly larger than that of any other uh, setup that I have here. So with that, the TL Type S setup uses a 310 millimeter diameter rotor, which is also the largest um, that I have here. So, the TL Type S brakes require quite a couple of modifications to get them to fit on the DC2 Type R. Uh, specifically, the parts that I don't like to do are either drilling my knuckles to uh, 14 millimeter bolts or machining uh, these mounting points down to accommodate the, the rotor or even attaching rotor spacers between the hub flange and the rotor to space them out for, for them to fit. Uh, so over some research and talking with friends, um, I found out that the Genesis 2010 to 2016 Genesis Coupe with the Track Pack Brembos will bolt on to the DC2 Type R uh, with barely any modifications. Okay, so the this setup uses a monoblock design caliper. This is a single piece of aluminum. Whereas the TL Type S is actually two pieces bolted together. Uh, this 
design change will sh uh, should offer uh, higher stiffness. There should be less deformation in the caliper, um, as well as the fact that this caliper uses four 42 millimeter pistons, which works out uh, from a piston area point of view to be bigger than that of the single 57 millimeter piston used in the DC2 Type R. The mounting points here and here uses a steel insert that is already built into the caliper to convert it down to a M12 bolt. So these will be able to uh, be bolted up to the DC2 Type R with the DC2 Type R bolts without any issues, as well as the fact that the back of the caliper uh, pressure line uses a banjo bolt of the same size as that of the DC2 Type R. So this will simplify the modification procedure without changing anything too specific on that of the DC2 Type R. The only part that you need to change is, uh, or modify, is when you try to use the Nissan Rogue third row seating uh, brake rotors. Uh, the hub center register is 68 millimeters, whereas the DC2 Type R is 70.1. So if you can machine down the brake rotor register hub down to 68 millimeters, this whole thing will be a bolt-on affair. This rotor specifically is 320 millimeters in diameter and 28 millimeters thick, whereas that of the TL Type S is only 310 millimeters in diameter and 25 millimeters thick. As you can also see, the pads here are the exact same shape between that of the TL Type S and the um, Genesis Brembos. So that means pads are interchangeable between these two. And what I have here is a G-Lock R12 pads um, that I've obtained from Frank Ewald um, on a buy one, get one free sale. So I'm very happy about that. And thank you, Frank. So with that, uh, the only modification you need for this setup to fit onto the DC2 Type R is a machined hub center register for fitting the 68 millimeter hub register on the brake rotors. So we have here the DC2 Type R knuckle bolted to the uh, Genesis Brembo brakes as well as the Nissan Rogue uh, rotors with third row seating. Uh, as you can see, I had to trim the dust shield uh, to clear the brakes, but once that is done, uh, the calipers themselves bolts right up to the DC2 Type R knuckles and uh, the rotors themselves are quite centered are pretty much centered in the calipers themselves I am able to slide in the brake pad on both sides relatively easily so the back side the pads goes in and the front side the pads also go in There you go. These pads are actually a little bit thicker than the original ones that's supposed to be coming with the uh, Genesis, but even that, the pads have no problems clearing. And as you can see, once I have it on the table, uh, the brake rotors themselves, I have one lug nut here to push down on the brake rotor, and I have machined down the wheel hub. Uh, brake register size down to 68 millimeters to clear this whole thing and the brake rotors themselves spin quite well in the in the setup um, I will be adding a wheel spacer just because the size of these Brembo brakes are quite large and only some wheels on the market clear this setup uh, I can attest to that the 17 inches, uh, the 17 inch RPF1 wheels, which are quite popular uh, amongst the track crowd and or just enthusiast crowd in general, will not clear these brakes. Uh, it is not a problem of spoke clearance, more so because the RPF1 barrels uh, taper in quite a bit. The barrel actually hits the top of the caliper. Okay, uh, those wheels will not clear the setup. Um, no matter how much you space it out. So you have to find a wheel, most likely 17 inch or bigger, uh, without a step down barrel. Uh, even if you have a barrel that is not stepped down, the next set of problems is the spoke clearance. These, uh, these Brembos are quite tall here, 
uh, the amount of space from the wheel mounting hub to the uh, caliper themselves are uh, pretty tight so only some specific wheels with lots of brake clearance will clear the setup so I'm opting to go to a space uh, wheel spacer so this is a 10 millimeter hub centric uh, wheel spacer uh, and then this is a you know another hub ring that converts it from the 64.1 to 73.1 uh, for the uh, wheels that I'm getting uh, once this whole setup is put together um, it should be quite nice for the track and I will definitely be making another video uh, to talk about the impressions uh, at the track so if you want a more detailed install video uh, you can go look up uh, somebody named Jeremy he runs a YouTube channel called FF uh, attack mission um, he has a very detailed install video for this specific setup uh, I am only going to be showing you this much uh, because I more so wanted to focus on the differences between these uh, various Honda brakes. All right, thank you very much. I will see you guys next time. Please like the video if you found it helpful. Comment if you have any questions or would like to discuss something. And please subscribe so you don't miss the track impression video in the future.